my girlfriend would be the first one to tell you my sense of time in terms of life is awful. <laughs> something either happened to me three days ago or three months, I don't remember. <laughs> but we put uh, something on to cook and I'm like, I think it's ready, it's been an hour, right? She's like, no, it's been seven minutes. So, <laughs> yeah. but within- It's been an hour. We're... Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. You guys, when it comes to living your life without limits, our guest is truly an inspiration. Despite being legally blind, he is a force in the world of movie trailers, promos, radio imaging, and commercials. He is truly unstoppable. We're getting buzzed with the amazing Pete Gustin. Hey guys, thanks Pete. for having me. Hey, hey! <laughs> Good to be here. And um, you walked out without one shoe, apparently. Uh, no, 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 he didn't. <laughs> But we definitely want the story yeah. on uh, on the one shoe off and one shoe on. Well, I got here in my slippers because that was all I could bear. And I was going to try and suffer through two shoes. But no, it's just the one right now. Because just before the interview, just uh, less than 48 hours ago, <laughs> I was uh, surfing down in Carlsbad where I live. And it was a pretty small wave day and everything was chill. And I was hanging out there in the, in the ocean. It was all nice and pretty. And I rode a wave into the sand. And I went to step off and whap, something just nailed me in the foot. And I, I, I'd never had experience with it at you first. You thought it was a shark attack. I thought it was, it, I thought it was a little miniature shark and you were going to eat your foot from a the two shark. inches of water. Uh, I, I, I didn't know what it was. At first I thought I hit a rock or something in an awkward position. Then I'm like, I, I pulled my foot up expecting to see a lobster hanging there. But I'd heard enough about it that I finally put two and two together. It was a stingray. Ouch. And I've been reading all about them. I had no idea what these things were like, but they're flat little things. And then your dumb human foot steps on it. And they've got tails that like, like a scorpion. It goes whap, right up on the top of your foot. And it's a barbed tail. So it ripped the top of my foot open and injected it with this nasty protein-based poison mm. that just like... For a minute, like whenever you do anything. You gotta get your protein how you can, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Protein, more protein, give it to me anyway. But it, 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 it like injects it in your stupid foot and then the pain gets worse. It's not like, if you, you know, you, you fall down, you skin your knee or if you, yeah. you stub your toe or something, yeah. the pain is instant and then it gets better. Like yes. that's every other pain I've ever experienced. This pain is like, ooh, that sucked. And it's getting worse. Like it just <laughs> kept getting worse over the next like, what, hour and a half, two hours. Oh, no. I actually, I was trying to suck it up and I'm sitting there on the beach and the blood's pouring out of my foot. I actually, the most exciting part of my day was the fact that I got driven home in the uh, uh, fire department lifeguard red truck. They brought me home and they're like, go get in the tub, put it in scalding hot water. It's the only way to break down the protein. Oh my oh. gosh. It was a good time. Wow. That is crazy, man. Well, I have to say, Tonight this is- on Nat Geo, we have- yeah, yeah. This is a VO Buzz Weekly yes, first, for is. sure. No, yeah. Nobody's ever had that happen. No. It's how, isn't that how, I think that's how Steve Irwin bit it by a stingray. I mean, he got it yeah. in the heart and exactly. I got it in the foot. But, yeah, well, good you know. thing yeah. you didn't fall on the stingray. Yeah. And you just stepped I, on it. Yeah, yeah those things are no joke. <laughs> They're no All joke. All right, well, at least you can still do your voiceover work. Yeah, Thankfully, absolutely. Thankfully, the surfing takes a, you're gonna have to take a minute off the surfing. Absolutely. Hey, listen, man, <laughs> all, all kidding aside, Aside, um, it did hurt. It, well, besides yeah. it, yeah, it hurting. But all kidding aside, man, <laughs> uh, Pete, I, 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 I've known you for a bunch of years now, man. We've we've mm -hmm. had a chance to work together. Um, when you were maneuvering your way into the voiceover industry, I've seen you go from like you know this guy that wanted to be a voice actor to this guy who's like an extremely successful voice actor. So today, man, we are here to celebrate you, to celebrate your accomplishments, and to celebrate the fact that even though you're legally blind, you can still do things that most people who can see perfectly can't. Yeah. Everybody else is just lazy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. But the bottom line is, man, is that you have this, this just power uh, about you that you know you don't take no for an answer and none of that good stuff. So we want to know a little bit about you. So can you please, just for everybody at home that maybe doesn't know a little bit about your story, can you take us back to how you got to 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 the to the point where you knew or found out that you were losing your vision? Well, let's go back to the moment I was born. <laughs> All the way back. Back at noise. I, I was actually born with perfect eyesight, but it only lasted, you know, a, a second because I was born with a degenerative eyesight disease. At the time, 
um, they didn't have a name for this specific disease. It got renamed later in my life. Uh, generally, it's called macular degeneration, which a lot of people uh, would be like, oh, that's what my grandma has. And it is. It's usually what your grandma gets when she's 80 years old. Right. Um, I got it, like I said, the moment I was born, we didn't notice it until I was eight. And I was in elementary school and I was sitting in the back row screwing off with my friends. But I also kind of wanted to see what was going on. So I started moving up, moving up, moving up. I'm in the front row and I'm still like trying to look in and see the board. And, you know, 1985, they're like, kid needs glasses. So they gave me glasses and I'm still trying to figure it out. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it was a long number of years story, but the, the long and the short is that I, I got a, a, a disease generally reserved for much older people. And it was so interesting that at the time, I try and tell people this now that are, that are younger, like I was diagnosed in 85 and we went into the, the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Institute and after a day of testing, they're like, you have macular degeneration. End of story. They sent us home. I right. mean, there's no cure. There's no prognosis. They, they didn't know anything. It's, it's individually different for everybody. And so in 85, we went home and we grabbed our Funk and Wagnall encyclopedia. Yeah. And we're trying to look up macular degeneration. We see, you know, mackerel, Montana, like no macular degeneration yeah. in there. And we're like, okay, I guess I've got an eyesight disease. And that was really the extent of the information. And I think um, all the credit for the, the trajectory of my life has to probably go to my mom where a lot of people involved with the state and involved with disabilities and, and social security programs and stuff wanted to be like, hey, your kid's gonna lose his eyesight over time. We don't know how fast, how slow, but he's gonna lose his eyesight. Let's put him in a special school. Let's get him uh, involved in some programs. You know, maybe he can collect some money when he's of age and that's how he's gonna go. Yeah. And I was like, no, he's not. He's gonna stay in regular school and he's gonna do everything everybody else does. And that was the, the that's, I wasn't making decisions, I was eight. But that's, you know, how I was told that I was going to perform with this eyesight disease. And that's what I did the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic, man. That's really cool. And, and one thing that I have to ask you is this, because I'm sure everybody out there is wondering this right now. But here you are, you get to the point where you're losing your vision. You can't really read stuff. And you say, hey, I'm going to become a voice actor. <laughs> so how, what the hell were you thinking when you thought that and what made you make that decision? From when I was a little kid and I, I went through puberty and I had this voice and everybody's like, you should be on the radio. And I was like, yeah, radio, I'll do that. I mean, I, I always, <laughs> do that. It, it, it seemed like something I'd, I'd be interested in. I, I loved listening to the radio, had all my personal favorites. So I grew up in Boston, all the people I used to listen to and idolize. And I did think it sounded like a, a, a really fun profession. And my eyesight was getting bad so slowly that by the time I got to college at Boston University, I was like, yeah, I could read copy for a living. I think I can do it. I mean, I, I'd have to blow it up to 24 or 36 point, And I was never able to read at the speed that you'd need to read. What I would have to do is get to auditions. I was doing this as a freshman in college, going in auditions at Soundtrack Recordings and other studios in Boston. I'd get there really early and ask for the copy and I'd take a little magnifier out of my pocket and I'd excuse myself and like go into the bathroom or something and, and read it with my magnifier and, and memorize the, the script. Right. And I was actually too embarrassed to even tell people what I was doing. I didn't want anybody looking at me differently. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would I'd go hide in the bathroom, memorize the script, and then I'd take the copy and hold it up in front of me as if I was reading it. And it was going great. I was fooling everybody and booking you know, a couple things here and there. One day I went in to go do the, the audition and they're like, that's great, but I'm like, but uh -oh. you know, I thought I memorized it. I have a pretty darn good memory. I thought I nailed it. And they're like, but why are you holding the script upside down and backwards? And I'm like, oh, oh, no, no totally. I just picked it up and just didn't even think. I'm like, I'm holding a piece of paper, right? Like everybody else. But the script is literally facing them. And I was like, listen. So I told them the whole story. And time went on and, and the eyesight just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I did. I got to the point when I was... Um, no longer able to look at words on a page anymore, um, no matter how big. I mean, stop sign font, you know, S-T-O-P, maybe, maybe I could see that if I held it right here, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely not going to be able to read it at a normal yeah. pace. Um, and it did, it did derail the voiceover career, I'm not going to lie, because, yeah. you know, just wake up and go, I can't see, fine, I'll keep going. You know, it, it takes time to build up the, the resolution, the, the courage to keep going, and also the, the tools that you need to make that happen. Um, I, I did move over into production for a while working at a radio station. I wanted to still be able to be on air and reading other people's scripts was becoming impossible. Right. So I decided if I'm the production guy, 
I'll write my own scripts or not write them and just, you know, work extemporaneously. I think that's the word uh, off the top of my head. Instead of writing a script, I'll just say stuff. And I started working as the creative director for a, a radio station in Boston doing the imaging. And I would be able to do my own voice work without having to read anything. And I got really comfortable in that pr profession. I loved it. I still do lots of production. I mean, creating radio production has been uh, one of the, the, the greatest things that I've been able to do in terms of creation. But I, I always knew, I'm like, I want to, I want to be a voice guy, and you can't do it reading your own script. You got to read other people's scripts. Yeah. And it, it really did. It took me a, a few years and the evolution of new technology to come up with a way to do it. Um, it actually happened totally by accident. I was in the back seat of a friend's car. I don't and think we need to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. We're getting in depth with yeah, Pete Gustin. Do we have any Just, music for this? No. You got $20, I'll teach you how to read copy. No. His friend's car. Okay. <laughs> but I, it was, I forget the exact year, but the it, it was definitely not. It was before even the first iPhone came out. I had one of those crappy phones called the Envy that you could flip open and had little speakers on it. Oh, and wow. one feature that it had in it and it was still a flip phone, but you could press the pound button and it would read text to you out loud. And so I was in the back of the car and I got, I, I got, a, I got a text. It was, about, it was about a Boston Red Sox game and I put the phone up to my ear and the thing was saying to me in real time, you know, Red Sox beat Yankees in 11 innings, uh, David Ortiz, walk off home run in the, in the, the 11th to win it. And that information as it was being fed into my ear, as I was listening to it, I was repeating it to my friends. Mm -hmm. And it didn't actually really occur to me. I, I went back to work the next day and I was still trying to, to see what I could see. I'm like, wait a minute, that, that could be a thing. That, that was worked. input. Yeah. I got audio, someone had written that, and then I listened to it and then spat it back. And that's what gave me the whole idea for the, uh, I call it the audio prompter system. And I guess these days it's probably not the most unique thing. I, I've heard uh, uh, Mike Rowe actually uses an audio prompter and, and other people use it for different reasons. but. For me, I've never seen anybody else do well, it. Well, he's yeah, just lazy because yeah. he can't read. <laughs> yeah. No, when, I mean? did, when I did on-camera hosting, sometimes I'd have an ear prompter. But let's talk about, can you describe your studio, how it's set up, and how uh, what the process is that you go through for sessions or auditions? So now, it's, I mean, it really took probably a solid, I'd say two years to, to become fluent in audio prompteries. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, I'm sticking the earbud in my ear because you can't have the microphone picking up um, robot noise in the background. Right. So I stick an earbud, jam it into my head, and then I also put a pair of headphones on top of that. So I got, and that's literally just to make sure that my shotgun mic isn't catching right. the noise. Um, and in the beginning, I'm listening to that robot voice, and the, the, the station I was working for was WEI, and the thing would be reading, you know, uh, this weekend on WEEI, join us, we'll be out on the streets. And I'm like, trying to repeat after it. I'm like, this weekend out on the streets, W-E-E-I, and it was like maddening. <laughs> so you're doing a robot voice yeah, yourself. <laughs> like I'm like repeating after the stupid robot. Like I'm hearing what it's saying and I'm yeah. like, and I listen back to it. I'm like, oh my God, this is like the worst thing ever. And you really, it took me a long time to, to, to learn to take that input as just that yeah. input. Right. The way you look at words on a page is how I had to learn to take that sound and just take it for these are just words. Forget how they're being said. Forget a robot is saying it. Forget the speed, the inflection. Just their words. You figure it out. You use your acting. And it, it did take me a while, but now, yeah, I, um, I get a script, and I don't know how many of my clients would like to know this, but I don't actually proofread. Um, yeah. I, I stick the earbud in. I throw the headphones on, stand up in front of the microphone, and I let the thing get about four to five seconds ahead of me, mm -hmm. so my brain is processing what the input, the words that I'm supposed to be getting, and it's telling me, you know, this is, this is, it's gonna be an upline, a downline, it's, here's the inflection, this is the power, and, and I'm processing that five seconds ahead yeah. and reciting five seconds behind uh, as the input is coming. I have a, a, a gaming mouse, actually, a multi-button gaming mouse in my right hand, which allows me to start, stop, speed it up, slow it down, rewind, fast forward, I'm doing all that with my right hand as the, the prompter gets behind or ahead of me. Yeah. And then I'm able to uh, act. It allows me to act, basically. I'm just getting that input, right hand controlling the speed at which I'm doing, and then I get to focus on emoting, getting across what the copy yeah. needs to say. Right. So I don't have to, I mean, for two years, it was getting down the mechanics 
of yeah, this whole thing, sure. and that's some crappy acting when you're focused on mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. But now it's, it's, it's And all so especially with promo, because you need something in eight seconds or 12 seconds, how do you navigate that? I have gotten over time a really good sense of time mm -hmm. for short period stuff. My girlfriend would be the first one to tell you my sense of time in terms of life <laughs> is awful. Something either happened to me three days ago or three months, I don't remember. <laughs> we put uh, something on to cook and I'm like, I think it's ready. It's been an hour, right? She's like, no, it's been seven minutes. So, yeah. but within, it's been an hour. We're, <laughs> Within promo template, promo time, I mean, yeah, a lot of the promo stuff, I mean, you get stuff all the time. It needs to be 3.22 seconds, yes. and this one needs to come in at 9.85. Um, just the, the machine of the, this isn't, my, we all have brains. Everybody's got a brain. Human brain does amazing things yeah. if you give it enough practice and time and repetitions. And God knows I've given it a lot of repetitions at this. And so it has, as anybody's brain would, adapted to the amount of input that it gets. I yeah. can't look at the clock, but I have one running in my yeah, head. Yeah, you've got to and get so I, I'm actually, I get a little, I still get a little surprised when someone wants something at 8.5 and I, I read it in the first take, I'm like, it was 8.6, that was pretty damn good. But like, yeah. it, it, it'll, it'll yeah. work out with That's practice. incredible, yeah. man. That's incredible. And I have to hit this because this is incredible. This is amazing, actually. So you currently are doing approximately, and I don't know if I'm 100% right, but approximately what, 40 to 60 sessions a day? Yeah. I, okay, I, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. I'm still talking. Is it? 40. <laughs> I want you guys to process this. Four, zero. 40 to 60 sessions per day like that. How he's telling you he's mm -hmm. doing this stuff. Because he is the branding voice of Fox News Channel. Has been now for what, four or five years or so? Coming up on three. So it's about three Time years? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but man, that's a lot of sessions every day. Yeah. 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 So how do you... How do you work with getting delivery? Because obviously that stuff has a very fast turnaround. Do you have any workarounds or shortcuts that you've created within your system? My, my whole studio has been this evolution of <laughs> buying seconds back in my day because it is a lot of sessions. I, I, I actually got that number. I, I keep a big file of every session I've ever done. At yeah. the end of last year, I had 10,003 sessions. It was wow. 10,003 in 2018. And I generally work Monday through Friday, some weekends. And yeah, it was averaging out. I mean, do the math. It, it, it's still about 50 a day, I guess. And so when you have that many, and a lot of my clients are news outlets, uh, not just Fox News, but radio stations. And then everybody. I work with rock stations. I work with country stations, promo people. Everybody out there doesn't want their time wasted. Right. And I remember being a creative services director, and I wasn't the voice of the station. And you have this great idea, and you write the copy, and you send it off, and then you sit there, and you wait for the voiceover guy to read the damn thing, and then you can start working on it. And I keep that in mind for all my clients, not just the ones like Fox News who are like, hey, something happened. We need to have this on air in three minutes and 18 seconds. You know, And that happens. Yeah. Like, yes. Fast. So... Everything in my studio, I started with I started with a left-handed uh, Contour Shuttle Pro mouse that I macroed a bunch of shortcuts on Pro Tools to, the right-handed mouse that I've macroed all of my reading shortcuts to. Then I added a, uh, a PreSonus fader, uh, master fader thing that goes with my Pro Tools, and that's all tactile. And so when I'm editing my voiceover, I mean, the, the reading is its own thing. And uh, yeah. generally, it's one take. It has to be. Yeah. It just has to be the, the way the workflow is. If I have to back up once or twice, fine. Um, but it, I don't get a chance to watch a lot of other people edit. I just don't. Um, but the way I edit, I feel like I'm at a piano um, with the two mice going and the fader out here. And however much audio is in front of me, I'm able to process it really fast, do my edits, uh, bounce it, upload it. I've got shortcuts for every, every, once it's uploaded, it's a shortcut. Open up this FTP folder or this Dropbox folder, get into that folder. Having to have shortcuts for the, the, the emails that I need to fire off here, your audio is ready at this location, password or not password, AIFF, WAVE, MP3, all ready to go, all shortcutted, all done. So by the time someone sends me a piece of copy and the time they're able to download it, I pride myself on that never being more than five minutes, usually shorter. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, oh my please, God. for I, anyone who's whiny going, it's hard to edit, <laughs> shut your all. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's awesome. Totally. Wow. So, okay, so doing that much volume, how do you take care of your voice? I mean, because you clearly, I mean, you're, you're not a robot. You might be hearing the robot, but you have this instrument that you need to take care of. So what do you do? 
I had never thought about it because I was a young man and everything that breaks on a young man fixes in two seconds. You yep. break yes. your shoulder and then you're shooting hoops the next day. Like everything's, you're indestructible. And yeah. then I was getting into my mid to late thirties and I got this job at Fox News and the volume of everything that I was doing was going up. Mm. And um, I started noticing that after about, I start my day at 6, 6.30, uh, first sessions a little before then. I started noticing that by 2 p.m., my voice was doing that a lot. I was losing control over it. Or it would start to go up at the end. Like I was, you know, Peter right. Brady going through uh, puberty <laughs> again. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, this is unacceptable. And, and I mean, I still had sessions from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And instead of being one take, it would be two, three, four, five until I was able to get the thing to work properly. And I didn't realize that I was overtaxing my instrument. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't understand that. Uh, a good friend of mine, Bill Ratner, who I think everybody yeah. in the voiceover yes. community knows, recommended me to a, a, a singing coach, uh, Darlene Kolden, Koldenhofen. I, I call her Darlene, Darlene, I forget the last name, but she, I should give her more credit because she saved my career and my life, giving me a massive, I, she gave me this massive set of warm-ups that we went through. It's a half hour set of singing warm-ups going up and down scales and extending my range mm -hmm. way above where I'd normally work. Point being that if you can get up here, then you can work in your optimal pitch much easier. Right. Um, and so we did this thing, this, this, this half hour session that was really, I felt like it was taxing, but at the very end, she's like, read some copy. And it was like 6 p.m. and I was like, I can get through it. My voice is working again. Yeah. Right, right, I was like, yeah. so how often do I do that? Once a week? Once every couple months? <laughs> She's like, no, that's an everyday thing. That's She's on the like, daily, Pete. Every day. Is yeah. that how you start your day? Now I wake up extra early now every day. Now you're up at 4.30. Yeah, right. How, lo how long do the exercise actually take you? It is, I can, I can spit through it in about 25 at this point. I would usually take, there's, it's, it's in three distinct parts. It's, it's very long and involved, but I would take breaks between because it was taxing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now I shoot through the whole thing because the day needs to start, needs to get going. I need to get through the, the workouts. And the funny thing is my singing, I'm still horrible at singing. I'm doing singing <laughs> workouts, all these me, 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 me. And I, <laughs> Like, oh, we were hoping you were gonna have a, an no. album drop. That must no. be great for Maggie. <laughs> oh, that's that's Maggie one of the. Maggie will uh, share your shower singing with oh, us. Oh yeah, then. oh yeah. No, it's <laughs> everyone one... sounds good in the shower. I do, I do it with the soundproof door closed. I don't want anybody <laughs> having to experience it. But you know, starting the weight low, 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 yeah. low, getting up high. And so when I, I, it's it's like weightlifting. I would, yes. you have to stretch and strengthen and tone and get them used to this mm -hmm. this amount of work. I mean, doing. 60 sessions a day and there I've done more I've done a lot more in certain days when you do that without having warmed up at the beginning yeah oh, no wonder yeah. she told me Darlene yeah. told me she's like if you kept going this way she's like I can tell the I way would, your voice is now mm -hmm. you'd be out of business in three to five years totally. wow. so she's and saying, do you do any kind of cool down as well like when you're done with the day or you just stop talking I haven't gotten done with the day yet so maybe when I finish a day <laughs> I'll let you know okay he's a vampire <laughs> okay so so you are you are he is, ladies and gentlemen. You are the exclusive branding voice for the Fox News channel. I am. How did you get that? Like, how did that come about for you? I, I we, we had moved from Boston to San Diego in July. And in October, this is 2016, I think. October, I get a phone call from my agent. Um, Fox News needs you on call for the weekend. I'm like, huh? Like out of the blue, didn't, just not like never spoke to them before, never auditioned anything, nothing. Um, they just need me on call for a weekend. I'm like, okay. So uh, my girlfriend and I spend uh, the first part of the weekend in the house waiting for a call, and uh, we ended up getting one when I just happened to be at home, and I read a piece of nine second copy and sent it in, and it went to air. And same thing on Sunday, we we read a couple, and then I was on call again Monday, and then thank you, thank you for your service. Uh, we you know we needed you to fill in for someone. Months go by, uh, October, November, December, January, I think we get into February. Hey, the people at Fox News would like to uh, have you read a couple pieces of copy. Am I filling in again? No, I just want to hear a couple pieces of copy. And that went on for a while. A couple different people want to hear you. A couple more people want to hear you. Hey, can you get on the phone with this executive producer? Can you get on the phone with this uh, vice president? Okay. Never mentioning, and my agent being very careful at the time, saying, this isn't a job. This mm. is not an opportunity. This is not an opening. They're not looking to fill. They're just exploring things right and uh, I've been around long enough that I knew to keep it in check um, right. that that if that's what they say it is that's what it is mm -hmm. um, but 
more time passed. It was, it was six months between when I did that first fill-in weekend and when I got a phone call that I'm now the voice of Fox News. It was actually St. Patrick's Day um, of 2016. They called me up and they're like, you're the guy. We need to change everything. So we're gonna get you on the horn right now. And the, the first question, one of the first questions, you have a portable rig, right? Because we might need you when you're not in your studio. I was like, okay, this is gonna be intense. This is gonna be really <laughs> interesting. And yeah. you said, well, of course I do. Yes, of course. <laughs> and we did, we started the, those first two months. I, I, I always feel bad having been a creative director myself. I'm like, everything you thought was cool and running, yeah, you gotta redo it. And you know, I was trying to be as cool with them as possible and give everything and in the nice clean cut up. I don't, I don't like to send up, send out dirty sessions. If they want it nine, they got it nine. I'm yeah. not sending them a mm -hmm, take two, let me clear that up. Like everything I send them was perfect and they yeah. seem to appreciate that. And we were able to rebrand the whole channel, I think inside, inside the first week probably. Yeah. Mm. Now, yeah. did, did they, were they aware of the fact that you really, that you couldn't read copy or, or that you had a, uh, an audio prompter before? I don't think so. I don't think they knew. Do they know now? Uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> I think they do, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, we, we, I'm, in, I'm in San Diego, they're in New York, uh, yeah. but I think, I think they all have a pretty good idea. I mean, basically them and all of my other employers yeah to uh, a very strong and certain degree, don't really care how I get the job done as yeah. long as I get the job yeah. done. If my audio prompter was bleeding through, if I needed to say, hey, this takes me a little longer because I have to do an audio prompter, if it was a problem, then they'd all know about it. Yeah. I'd actually prefer they don't know about it or not, if they're not mentioning it, I'm doing it yeah. right. Yeah. Well, That's I have to say sense. something, and this is not for you to get a big head. Yeah. All right, no more big heads here. Uh, put your hands, I can have a big head, but you can't. Put your hands on no. either side of your um, head. I hear you squeeze. all the time, yeah. whether it's uh, Fox News Channel on TV or on Sirius Radio Imaging, yeah. or whatever, and We're you're on like, there. Pete. 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 Any promo that comes on, anything that comes on, it's Pete. And I remember, like, I'm like, wait a minute. That's Pete. Like when you first got the gig, I'm like, oh my God, that's Pete. It's got to be Pete. Pete, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Um, and I have to say, some of the stuff that you read is out of this world. It's mm -hmm. so good. I mean, it's just like, yeah. I, I don't mean, I, can't, I know you and I know what you've had to do and I can't even believe that yeah. you could physically and actually do that because your acting is so good. The way you read those promos and you read them fast, man. Right. Some of this stuff is just like, -da 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 -da, and you're hitting all the marks and everything. I'm like, oh my God. Well, so you have this beautiful baritone. Thank you, puberty, right? Yes. yes. So, but did you think at some point, oh, I've got the beautiful voice. That's enough to do voiceover. I did. I did. Yeah. I thought. I thought. And and I, I was growing up uh, listening to radio in the '80s and early '90s, and and it was the big voice was all you needed, or I thought that's yeah. really all you needed. And uh, to, to jump, circle back a little bit, and answer this at the same time, the 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 range that you're hearing is me being petrified of losing work. Uh, again, my girlfriend will tell you I'm insane because I got the job with Fox News. As soon as it settled down in terms of re-imaging the whole channel, the next thing I did was did a huge blitz to rock radio stations, then AC radio stations, then country radio stations, because I didn't want to just be known as the guy with the news talk read. Mm -hmm. I figured that profession might have a shelf life on it, and if it expired and all I was was the news talk guy, then I'm hosed. Yeah. So the, the getting that job, which I think a lot of people normal human beings would be like, ah, oh, good, I've got a job, a steady job that pays well and I can right. be comfortable. It made me like more panicked to go out there and <laughs> practice more. And then I got on the phone with my manager, uh, uh, Jason Helsner. I was like, submit me for more comedy. Uh, submit me for more sci-fi. Like, you know, I need more like range, crazy things that yeah. I want to try and read because the, mm -hmm. the bigger range, the more things that you can read for, the less pigeonholed you are. I think the longer this career uh, will last, hopefully. Yeah. Absolutely, So did man. you ever say... I need to study acting, I need to work with people, or you just sort of, how did you get the chops that you have? Yeah. Well, my first- Are you a natural prodigy? No, no, I was not. No, I was horrible. <laughs> I was terrible. I, w I was brought up in radio, on radio with this voice, which is like, I compare it to like being a person that goes to the blackjack table and wins for the first time. You're like, this is easy. You yeah. know, it was easy. I just came here and I won. And I just showed up to the microphone and I had this voice in the uh, you know mid nineties. Like, yeah, just keep doing that. And, and then when I decided I wanted to get out of just doing uh, sports radio is what I was doing mostly. And I think the first wake up call was probably on the, the phone with you, Chuck. Um, I, I'd, I'd gotten signed to uh, Paul Wintner's roster uh, early on, probably before I was ready to be there. And we got on, we were doing a movie trailer demo, 
and I actually remember it was Divergent. Uh, yeah, it was I remember the that. very first thing we did. <clears throat> and um, what's the first line? If they can't find you, they can't catch you. Something like that. Yeah. And I was like, if they can't find you, they can't catch you. Don't I sound awesome? Yeah. And you're, <laughs> and you're like, no, dude, you, no, this is not awesome. <laughs> and the, the, that whole first trailer, my whole first demo basically is just me repeating after Chuck. Like, <laughs> It's my voice. He's exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, you coached me, like, right through, like, take it down, 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 yeah. down, down, like, take yeah. it down, take it back. You're, you're revving your engine. You don't yeah, yeah. need to. And so you, you gave me the first hint that I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, there's, there is emoting and acting and emotion. It has very little to do with the sound of your voice. Yeah. I always yes. try and tell people yes. that are like, oh, you've got a great voice. No wonder you're in. Like, watch TV for 20 minutes. And tell me how many people in the 20 minutes sound like me. One, usually. Yeah. One. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe the announcer. Yeah. It all depends what network you're listening to. Mm -hmm. You could listen to uh, ABC or Fox for those 20 minutes and maybe hear zero. Most of the guys are just really good actors with regular voices. And especially yeah. in the world of commercials, which I do... I do a little of everything, so I do some commercials, but commercial work, which is fantastic pay and, and good if you can get it, none of them sound like this outside of someone doing like a big movie trailer parody thing yeah, or, exactly. or, or uh, you know, the Arby's We Have the Meats, uh, yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. Um, most of voice acting is, surprise, surprise, acting. And you mm -hmm. set me on the road to learn that. I started working with Maurice Tobias like a madman. I worked with uh, uh, David Lyerly out of New York who basically had me in tears one day telling me how terrible I was. And he was right, he yeah. was right. Art Butler out in LA, I worked with him as a coach. Mm. Uh, and all everybody in their, their different ways told me I was very bad <laughs> and what I was trying to do and I needed to get better. Yeah. And well, that was yes. important for me to hear. Yes. I know, and yes. I remember that because I remember when working with you, one of the, that's my thought when I was working with you, I was like, man, he's young, he's, he's open, got this though. freaking so cool open. voice. And he's unstoppable. So I'm thinking if he could just calm the heck down, you know what I mean? <laughs> and forget that he's announcing everything and he's just kind of talk it out. He's going to be freaking huge. And But the cool thing was this. I gave you some tools and I gave you some stuff and we worked together on a few demos. And then you ran. And just like you figured out how to do stuff with both hands and your feet and make everything work, you made it work, man. And you figured out who you are and what you are and developed yourself into a product that is viable and also sexy. valuable. I was going sexy. And sexy. <laughs> and sexy. All right, guys, that concludes part one with our good buddy, Pete Gustin. Make sure you stick around next week for part two. It's going to be insane. It is. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosthatrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.